Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. In our last episode, we were introduced to a man named Moses. Moses was an Israelite who grew up in the Egyptian Pharaoh's palace. Except one day, Moses killed an Egyptian in his anger and fled to the desert where he lived for 40 years. Today, we're going to find out what happens next to Moses. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard God's voice? Have you ever heard God speak to you? Did you know that God is speaking to you all the time? The Bible says that God even sings over you. You may not have heard God's voice like you hear your mom's voice or your dad's voice when they speak to you. But when you open up your Bible and begin to read his word, the Holy Spirit causes God's words to go deep inside your heart. And as you pray and be quiet before the Lord, the Holy Spirit reminds you of what God has spoken to you in his word. He is like a still small voice reminding you all the time that he loves you and is with you. Do you know that Moses heard God's voice? He heard God's voice speak to him out loud, and it was one of the most incredible moments of the Bible. Would you like to know more about it? Good. Let's find out what happens. One day, Moses was out taking care of the sheep of his father-in-law. He led the flock of sheep to the far (laughs) side of the desert and came to a mountain called Horeb. The Bible calls it the mountain of God. As Moses was walking his sheep, all of the sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses looked closely at the bush. He saw the flames of fire surrounding the bush, but he noticed that the bush did not burn up. Moses was curious. He thought, I will just walk over to see this strange sight and find out why the bush does not burn up. When God saw that the bush had caught Moses' attention and that Moses had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. And all of the sudden, the voice of God spoke out from the burning bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses answered, Here I am. Do not come any closer. God said, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses realized that this was God himself, the God that had revealed himself to his fathers, Moses hid his face. He was in awe and afraid to look at God. Here was Moses, in the presence of God himself, standing on holy ground. Do you know what the word holy means? God is holy, which means he is pure, and there is nothing evil or bad in him. When God appeared to Moses, the bush and the ground around it became holy because God is holy. Where God is, there is holiness. And because he is holy, we worship him and give him all of our honor and allegiance. Have you ever stood before a king? If you've never stood before a real life king, maybe you've read about kings or watched a movie about a king. What do most people do when they come before a king? Don't they bow and show respect? They know that the king is the ruler of the land that he has all power and control. God is similar to a king. He is a good king, and while he loves us very much, he is also a holy king and one to be respected and honored. 
Can you imagine what it was like for Moses to be in the very presence of God, standing before a bush of fire that didn't burn up? Then the Lord said, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Did you hear that? God was not so far away that he did not hear the cries of the Israelites in slavery. He heard their cries and misery. It was now time for God to save them, and he was going to use Moses. Wait a minute. I know what you are thinking. God is going to use Moses? But didn't Moses kill an Egyptian and run away to hide in the desert? Well, yes, he did. Isn't it good to know that God gives us second chances even after we've made mistakes? How exciting for Moses. He was going to be used by God to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. Moses must have been ready to go and do this great mission for God. But Moses said, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Wait. Is Moses really arguing with God? It sounds like Moses is a little bit scared, don't you think? So God reassured Moses and said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship me on this mountain. Well, Moses, still afraid, and not sure of this task that God was asking him to do, said, What if I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? Dear truth seekers, here is a very important part of this story. You see, in those days, the people of the world, especially the Egyptians, believed in and worshipped many different kinds of gods. Oh, they weren't real gods, but they worshipped things like the sun, the moon, the trees, the rivers, the animals. You and I know that these things were never meant to be worshipped. Only God is the one true God who should be worshipped. So Moses was asking God to give him a name that he could tell the Israelites, This is the one true God who appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that was sending him Moses. So God said to Moses, Tell them, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Another way to say this name for God is Yahweh. Can you say Yahweh? When God says, I am who I am, it means he is greater than the sun, the moon, the stars, the rivers, and the trees, because he is the one who created those things. God was saying to Moses, I am the creator. I am the one true God. I am all powerful. I am all knowing. I am everything you need me to be. I am was his name. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go and gather together the leaders of the Israelites and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery. I will bring you to the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
they will listen to you. Then you and the leaders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord the God of the Israelites has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all kinds of wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. Even after all of God's reassurance to Moses, Moses hesitated once again, and out of fear he said, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, Moses, you are just making this up. God did not really appear to you. Then the Lord said to Moses, What is in your hand? A staff, said Moses. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw his staff on the ground, and do you know what happened? His wooden staff all of the sudden turned into a snake. Right there before Moses was a snake slithering on the ground. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Okay, now here's the part I would have hesitated. What, God? You want me to reach out and pick up that snake? Um, no, thank you, God. But Moses reached down, took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord the God of their fathers has appeared to you. Then the Lord, Yahweh, said to Moses, Put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was covered in a horrible disease called leprosy. The Lord said, Now put it back in your cloak. And Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored. Then the Lord said to Moses, If they do not believe you, or pay attention to the first miraculous sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs, or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Now, truth seekers, so far, God has appeared to Moses in a burning bush that did not burn up. He revealed his name, Yahweh, to Moses and gave him three miraculous signs to perform so that the Israelites would believe that God had sent him. And still Moses hesitated. In his fear, he said, O Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to me. I am slow of speech and tongue. Moses was afraid that he would not be able to speak well to the Israelites, where they would listen to him and follow him. Moses was just plain afraid that he wasn't good enough for this task that the Lord was asking him to complete. So the Lord said to Moses, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Finally, after all of that, after all of God's promises and reassurances to Moses, do you know what Moses said? Oh, Lord, please send someone else to do it. Wait, what? Did Moses just tell God to send someone else? The Lord said, Moses, what about your brother Aaron? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and his heart will be glad when he sees you. He can go with you, and I will help both of you speak, and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth. So finally, Moses, being reassured by God that God would be with him, God would help him, God would send his brother Aaron to go with him, Moses went back to his father-in-law and told him what had happened. He said, let me go back to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. So Moses took his wife and sons and put them on a donkey and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. 
And Moses met his brother Aaron and told him all that God had showed him and commanded him and had sent him to say. And Moses and Aaron brought together all of the leaders of Israel. And Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. And he also performed the signs before the people and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. Dear Truth Seekers, what is the truth that you are finding in this story as you were listening? What did you hear God whispering to you? Did you find the truth that God wants to use you to tell others about Him? God wanted Moses to go back to his people in Egypt and tell them that he had heard their cries and he wanted to deliver them. But Moses was afraid and scared. You see, God knows that you are not perfect and that you might be scared too. But just like with Moses, God promises that he will help you and teach you what to say. There are lots of people out there that need to hear about God and how much he loves them. Will you be like Moses and go, even though you might be afraid? Will you let your light shine and be an example to those around you? True Seekers, I would love to hear from you. Let me know how God is speaking to you through our Bible stories together. You can email me at truthseekersbiblestories at gmail.com or leave a review in iTunes and let me know what truths you have been learning. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Exodus chapters 3 and 4. Let me pray for you before we go. Dear Father, today we learn that you are holy and that you reveal yourself as the great I am. You are everything we need. You are powerful and mighty and good and strong, and you want the world to know about you. Help us to be brave and step out and share the good news about you with others. They need to know about you, and we might just be the ones you want to use to tell them. Give us boldness and courage and help us to know what to say. Thank you for loving us so much that you give us second chances to be used by you. Amen. Thank you for joining me, Truth Seekers, and I look forward to our next story together.